One of the most important things for rendering in Unreal Engine 5 is the post-process volume. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a giant Instagram filter that you can add to your scene. To add a post-process volume, you can go into your Place Actors panel over here or the cube plus sign right here and click and drag into your scene. Now, on average, this is the best way to deal with the post-process volume. You're going to scroll up to your post-process volume settings. You're going to make sure that the location is zeroed out, and then you're going to go to the search bar and type UNB. Now, what this is going to do is basically make the post-process volume encompass the entire scene. So wherever your camera is, then you're going to be getting the effects of the post-process volume. I'm going to take this and move it to a folder at the top of my outliner over here. And I'm just going to show you what it does really quickly. So I'm going to clear out my search bar of the un bound that we just changed. And then if I go into, let's say, my exposure settings right here, I can go in and change how bright or how dark my image is. And if I were to leave this camera and do the same thing, it's going to adjust the entire scene and make things darker or brighter. So the post-process volume is the first thing that you should pretty much add to any cinematic that you want to make an Unreal Engine. In today's video, I'm going to show you some of the visual effects that you can add to your scenes using the post-process volume. So the most important ones that most people will end up using in the post-process volume are going to be your bloom, lens flares, and maybe some other chromatic aberration and other lens effects. The first thing is bloom. If we turn on the bloom right here by going into your post-process volume and under the lens settings, bloom settings, we can select the method and we can change it between standard and convolution. We're going to stick with standard for now and if we select the intensity and bring it up we can increase the glow around the brightest parts of our image. So if we were to go in and change this threshold we can say what of our brightest parts is going to create that glow. Now, standard and convolution are interchangeable, but for cinematics, a lot of people use convolution. The problem is that convolution is more expensive, as in you have to pay me money to use it. I'm kidding, you don't need to pay me money to use it. Instead, it just takes more rendering and processing power. In general, if you're doing cinematics, I have not noticed a significant frame drop or performance hit, so convolution is fine a lot of the time. Again, we can go in and change our intensity. We can also go into the advanced tab and say, hey, what is going to affect our convolution settings and how detailed are we going to get with the bloom effect under our post-process volume? Now, if we leave this camera, we can still see that we're affecting the rest of the scene, but in general, if you turn off the post-process volume, we're going to turn off that bloom effect. And that's going to apply to all the other visual effects that we're going to see in this tutorial. So I'm going to go back into my camera, and if I look through my main camera by selecting this little button right here, now I realize I forgot to turn my post-process volume back on, we can see that we're getting a bunch of glow and bloom and artifacts across our scene. That's going to bring me to the next setting that's super valuable in the VFX settings of the post-process volume. I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to have this setting called Lens Flares. And we can find it right here. We can see that if we increase this value or increase the bokeh size, we're going to get these artifacts. They're basically lens flares that are hitting the lens in this video game scene, this unreal scene. So the reason why you might have this is let's say you have a light source in your scene and you want it to create this cool looking effect. But the problem that I have with lens flares in Unreal Engine is that it looks a little fake. If we were to pull up Shot Deck, which is a resource for gathering reference images from films, TV, just some of the best work work in the world in Hollywood, we can see that a lot of the time, any lens flare that we're searching for in this image database, we're only getting one light source and maybe a couple lens elements hitting the frame. Versus if we go back to Unreal Engine, we can see that we're getting a ton of lens flares across our screen. Now, you can adjust this by adjusting your scene and having less light sources. You can adjust the threshold. You can go in and be like, only one, one thing is going to affect and create that lens flare. But on average, I don't like using the lens flares in Unreal Engine because I just don't think they look that realistic. Granted, if you're making a game and this is what you need to use to create the real-time experience effect, Sure, go ahead and use lens flares in the post-process volume, but I personally don't like using it for my work in commercials and cinematics and stuff like that. So what I do with my bloom and my bokeh, my lens flares, all that is I just set everything to zero and then I just turn it off. I turn off the bloom, I turn off the intensity, I bring the threshold to a much higher number. I just make sure that I'm not going to get 
any artifacts of bloom and lens flares in my scene. Now, when it comes to creating visual effects, a lot of the time artists will dirty up a piece of footage, an image, to make it look a little bit more realistic. Versus a cinematographer will do their best to try and have the most perfect image on screen. And it's a balance of both. So we need to be really subtle with the next visual effects I'm gonna show you. The first and perhaps the most prominent that a lot of artists add on too much at the beginning of a project is chromatic aberration. And if I turn this on here and I increase my value, we're getting this interesting little red green blue separation of our image now I don't like this you can use visual effects if you want you can add even a dirt mask and you can create some like smudges on your lens I'm not gonna touch my lens because that's just gonna look gross but you could add this in the post process volume if you like you just need to add a texture in this slot right here I turn these off a lot of the time because I don't think they look best in Unreal the only visual effects that I would even consider adding if I really needed to is if I scroll down to my image effects, I have a vignette. And basically that's just going to darken around the images of our frame to make it focus on the center of our frame. But here's the kicker. If I jump over to DaVinci Resolve, I would do all of these effects in DaVinci. So I could do the same thing. I can go into my library and I can type in a glow and I can create this glow effect. And now I'm getting that same bloom. Or I can add a halation, which is another type of glow effect around lens elements in a true camera. And we can get a much more interesting look. Same thing with a vignette. I can add another node by hitting Alt S on my keyboard undo that because I turned off some nodes. Alt S on my keyboard. I can go into my power window. I can add a mask by selecting that node, add mask. I can shape it up however I want. And then I can just affect what I need to affect, invert that. And I'm achieving the same thing that the post-process volume can do in my other dedicated color grading software. Now, why would you do this? The first thing is that if you're dealing with a small project, you can do a lot of the stuff with the post-process volume in Unreal Engine. But let's say hypothetically you're dealing with a much bigger project with different scenes, different shots, lots of different tools that you need to manage and other artists in the scene. I don't like using this post-process volume setting because a lot of the final look elements such as chromatic aberration, or our lens flares, our bloom, etc., etc., that might need to be handled in DaVinci for an entire project overall. So that is the post-process volume visual effects settings that I use. Bloom, lens flares, I turn them off, and I may adjust my vignette if I want to, but if you need to know how to do that in Unreal Engine, that is where you would adjust your visual effects setting in the post-process volume. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, Comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.